uh, 13. Um, yeah, this is my newest uh, creation. This is uh, uh, built on a 600 Remington action. You never see anybody really do much with those. Uh, uh, this was uh, my old standard, my old standby hunting gun. I've, I've probably shot 20 or more elk with that gun in its prior uh, life, which was kind of an odd gun. It, uh, it was a 600 Remington with a 721 uh, Remington barrel threaded into it and then rechambered out to 308. I didn't do any of the work. I bought the gun for 90 bucks at a, at a gun store probably, oh, pushing 30 years ago. Um, the, uh, uh, anyway, it was always a really lucky gun. I, I've kind of gotten where I don't hunt much anymore. I've, I've, uh, I've gotten where I, I just don't hunt. I, you know, I still go hunting, but I try like crazy not to shoot anything. Um, anyway, but, uh, I knew I wouldn't hunt with a gun anymore, so I decided to build kind of a sniper rifle out of it. And uh, it was challenging to say the least. I tell you, there's uh, pretty close quarters in 600 Remington. They're not the same as a short action. Uh, they're, uh, I mean, the opening in the action is actually a little longer, but uh, the distance between the trigger and the magazine is pretty short. Made it pretty tough. Uh, it did turn out to be a pretty good shooter. Um, there's uh, there's two groups I shot at 200 yards. They both look like four shot groups, but they're both five shot groups. Um, that's 200 yards, and of course there's a penny there for scale. Um, anyway, the uh, uh, that's uh, 46 grains BLC2, 168 grain Nosler custom competition bullet. Um, that's one of Nosler's actually cheapest bullets. Actually, that's those are Nosler seconds. Um, those uh, I think they cost $16 a hundred. They're really hard to get the seconds. Uh, but I live in the same town Nosler the bullets are made, and so I peruse their factory pretty pretty often. And, uh, like I say, I, I swear their second shoot is good as their first, if not better. Um, anyway, here's, uh, more close-ups of the gun. Um, it takes, uh, that Accuracy International magazine. I've always been a fan of those. Um, this actually, uh, or it'll take a Ruger magazine. This actually is a Ruger magazine. And, uh, uh, and of course, uh, uh, AR type grip and, uh, the cheek piece adjustable, butt stocks adjustable. Um, I shoot a, sh a low cheek and a, sh and a short stock. So I, I set it to fit me when everything's all the way down. There's a monopod there in the back. And, um, uh, anyway, the, I, I got the, trigger I changed the springs in the trigger got the trigger down to about eight ounces well, I'm a sucker for a light trigger uh, the one thing I did that's a little different that I'll show you right here this stock is two piece and that forearm clamps onto the recoil lug right there and um, uh, I was uh, my Armalite uh, Lapua uh, 338 Lapua clamps the total different method of clamping but it, it it clamps onto the recoil lug that struck me as a good idea and it's a v-block aluminum uh action and uh uh or i mean uh, uh chassis and uh, uh it uh it locks that baby in there really good and uh i think it works really well that's a an Accuracy International style spigot mount adapter that adapts to a Harris bipod. But uh, anyway, and then I put a muzzle brake on the end there. Um, kind of a clunky looking thing. It's one I had around here. I'm experimenting with different muzzle brakes. If you might notice from the pictures, it's not completely indexed just exactly right because it's not torqued down all the way yet. When it torques down, it it uh, it is indexed right. But right now it's just... Oh, a little overhand tight. Um, 
anyway, but uh, uh, I really wanted literally no recoil out of this gun, so I put such an excessive muzzle brake on it. Um, you can see the muzzle brakes, the kind of the holes on the top get muzzle jump, and it works pretty well. Um, the, uh, like I say, I, uh, not really sure I like the size of that brake. If you can see, it's a number seven contour, uh, shilling barrel cut to 20 inches long, and, uh, I engraved the shill in there. I don't know. Well, can't seem to get that to focus very well. Uh, there you go. Yep. Anyway, Leopold Mark IV scope. Um, and uh, anyway, it's. Uh, I tried to build it as light as I could. The gun weighs about 10 pounds. Um, and it's still not what you call a light gun, but compared to the other sniper rifles I've built, it's real light. I'll show you the other side. There's the other side of it. And you can see that it pivots on that bipod. You can also lock that. I turned the front sling swivel into kind of like a thumb screw that you can actually turn and lock that. You can lock it solid um, uh, or, you know, uh, make it, let it uh, pivot like that. Uh, again, I left the standard bolt, 600 Remington bolt. I blued the bolt, and uh, um, anyway, that's uh, that's the way that works. And um, anyway, the aluminum stock is just drilled and cut uh, as much aluminum as I could get off of it. I I took every every bit of aluminum off I could uh, without sacrificing the rigidity. Uh, the uh, I'll show you my MAGA release in, in just a second. And the MAGA release down there, just a simple spring. Um, uh, real simple process. As you can see, that's actually a Ruger magazine. Um, they uh, seem to interchange with the Accuracy Internationals. That's from the Ruger Scout rifle. And uh, anyway, then there's the uh, there's my monopod down there. Like I say, I should have filmed when I was out at the range the other day. I, I was not anticipating a good day at the range. Turned out it was one of the better days I've had out there. One of the better days I had out there at the range. I got out there, it was 46 degrees, hardly any wind blowing. I shot a six inch group at 1200 yards with my 338 Lapua. I was pretty happy with that. The uh, um, the other thing I wanted to comment on is this is a Leopold Mark IV, 8.5 to 25. It's an older one. It does not have a lit reticle. And uh, it's got the Leopold uh, uh, scope caps. And they're aluminum. And they are so cool. I gotta admit, I'm kind of a Night Force guy, but... Uh, these scope caps almost make me like Leopold's better. I mean, it's, they just work so good. They're magnetic and, and they're just neat as they can be. Um, anyway, next, next part of this video should have the gun out at the range. And uh, uh, anyway, you'll see how it shoots. The, I'm going to do some experimenting with different brakes. Um, the, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just see which one works. As I wanted to show you, almost forgot, as I cut the, the cheek rest, ran a ball mill down that cheek rest, as you can see, and that is so slick. The cheek rest is just, just right about bore line when it's all the way down. And uh, in the position I shoot the thing, it is absolutely perfect for your ramrod guide. You can see where I wore the paint off the thing. Um, the uh, 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 cleaning during barrel break-in, stuff like that. Um, and it just, it's a heck of a good idea. I, uh, I think for the Lapua I'm going to build a cheek rest. 
might actually even have a hole in it or at least a slot uh, where you can run the ramrod in and uh, uh, work with a ramrod guide a little bit. I also use a, a, a guide that goes in the chamber also but uh, uh, this is just That's adds that Lapua. Much the 338 Lapua it's an Armalite and this is going to go down as an official apology to Armalite. Uh, when I first got this gun my god I couldn't make it shoot. I, I, I don't really I, I guess I just got unlucky and, and found every load that the gun didn't like. Um, I tried all kinds of stuff, shot hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of ammo through the thing. And uh, uh, anyway, I, I couldn't get it to, sh I mean, it shot okay, but you know, we're talking three inch groups at 200 yards, you know, which, I mean, it isn't okay. I mean, but some people call that okay. I don't call it okay. But anyway, um, <clears throat> the, uh, it's a one trick pony. Um, it does not like hot loads, must have a pretty tight chamber. Um, it, I shoot 88 grains of a tumbo and a 300 grain Sierra Match King with Magnum primers and uh, um, now it, it shoots phenomenal. It's a quarter minute angle gun. Uh, I just shot a six inch group at 1200 yards. Um, the, uh, uh, it was, it, it's an amazing gun. Um, it, like I say, it's uh, even my 88 grains of Rotumbo load are, are seem to push it as far as I mean. I, I put 88 and a half, and and I get difficult bolt lift. So uh, um, I don't quite understand why that's the case. The Lapu I built that you've seen in my previous videos can shoot a lot hotter load than that, but I can't complain. The reason I haven't built myself a Lapua. Uh, is because this one shoots so good and the uh, magazine system is flawless you can see I got a night force on it um, it is just a really neat neat gun I'm gonna machine a uh, different buttstock for it uh, not that there's anything wrong with that one I just uh, I just think I can improve on it a little bit um, I like just like doing stuff like that but uh, it's the only thing I could ever do to this gun to make it any better. Um, it's light enough to hunt with. Um, if you ever want to buy a really, really good uh, 338 Lapua, yeah, I tell you, you can do a lot worse than an Armalite. Um, I, uh, like I say, I love the gun. Close up of that uh, wild muzzle brake they got on there. I was shooting this off the tailgate in my pickup, shooting, uh, uh, I, I kneel alongside the, the tailgate on my pickup and, and put my sandbags on the tailgate, shoot that way, and I did this and blew the tail light clear out of my Dodge. The, uh, not with the bullet, but just with the side blast out of that, uh, that muzzle brake. It's, uh, it's really something out of the 338 Lapua, but you can shoot this gun. Uh, you don't even think a recoil. It, it just eliminates the recoil. Uh, it's it's a bugger to get out of a case. Um, it uh, uh, you know it, it's uh, dinged practically every other gun in my gun safe, but it's worth it because, like I say, it tames that Lapua down something else. Really great. Good job, Armalite. I apologize. I bitched at you at first.